right, I wanted to do a uh, short video here on, uh, reviewing the uh, order of operations again. Um, I've covered this before in a couple other videos, but I wanted to go, go into a little bit more detail and cover some other things that have come up, some other ideas. Um, and basically, I want to start at the beginning and say that the Order of Operations Convention uh, allows for people all over the world to get the same answer to a problem. Um, there's a structure to the convention that's been developed and started around the 16th century. Now, there's a lot of confusion about it and wrong assumptions about the use of the Order of Operations uh, Convention. Um, it's known by many uh, different uh, mnemonics and uh, acronyms around the world. Uh, some of the acronyms. Uh, I'm familiar with are PEMDAS, uh, BODMAS, FEDMAS, and uh, VIDMAS. Um, I've also seen some references to Punkt or Stritch, which I believe is German. Uh, I think it's interpreted as point before line. Um, the various acronyms and mnemonics, there's mnemonics like please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Some people use that as a memorization tool. Uh, refers to the really the same order of operation rules. Um, the, um, well, it's actually a convention, but still, um, these uh, the convention applies in all situations, not just for algebra, uh, and not just when there's parentheses or brackets. So uh, the the order of operations always applies when you're looking at an equation or expression uh, of any kind. Um, so the basic the basic four steps of it are number one parentheses, um, then you have exponents. Uh, multiplication or division left to right, um, then you have addition or subtraction left to right. Um, the acronyms, they also, oftentimes they confuse people into believing that there's six steps <clears throat> to the order uh, when there's actually only four. And it doesn't matter which of the acronyms that you learned um, or where you were taught, the order of operations uh, convention would be consistent. Um, the multiplication and division are the same operation, and so they've got equal precedence. Um, you can multiply 10 times 2, or you can divide 10 by 0.5, or 10 divided by a half. Uh, it's the same thing. So the answer is 20 in both of those cases. So when you're solving a problem that has multiplication and division, uh, you look at the four steps of order of operations. And when you get to multiplication and division, you're just solving them left to right as you encounter them. <clears throat> One doesn't have any priority over the other. Um, then addition and subtraction are the same, same operation as well. Um, they've got equal precedence. Um, subtraction is really just the same thing as adding a negative number. So you can think of them as the same, the same operation. Um, if somebody tells you that division always comes before multiplication uh, because Bodmus tells him so, or another person tells you that multiplication is always first, you know, before division, because PEMDAS tells him so, um, those individuals actually wasted a lot of time uh, memorizing the order of six letters in an acronym, but they they really failed. To understand that both acronyms describe the same four-step convention. Uh, and then it also needs to be remembered that there's not multiple, there aren't multiple method, methods of education around the world regarding order of operations. <clears throat> now the only exception I might make to that is that, that I've been told that in Kenya they actually teach that division comes before multiplication. Uh, now if you work out an order of operations problem the standard way that we do where you're going left to right, uh, multiplication and division have equal precedence. Or you follow the method from Kenya where they, they tell their students that division is done first. You're going to find out you actually get the same answer. Um, I've got another video um, that reviews a uh, like the myth and math, the myth or math um, video about order of operations. goes into a little bit more about that, but I won't, I won't cover that here. But um, so it's really common to see people in forums say, you know, in my day the answer was X, you know, whatever the answer to that problem was that they think it is. Or when I went to school, the answer would have been X uh, before all the new math. The answer would have been X, you know, that, that type of answer. But, um, you know, I've, I've said it before, but I, I think the best explanation I can think of for those statements is uh, 
something known as the Mandela effect, you know, because I see a lot of people chime in on threads and one person will start to say, hey, I, I learned it the same way you did, you know, the old school way. Um, although that's really false, I, you're, you're really not a, no competent mathematics teacher would have taught anybody to solve left to right and ignore the order of operations. And, and there's plenty of good reasons for that. I mean, you can go back and look at old textbooks that, that show the same order of operations that exists today. Um, I think there's there's a lot of uh, forgetfulness. You know, maybe people, you know, some people are out of school 40, 50, 60 years from elementary school, so they're, they're not going to remember all that. Um, you know, many of the puzzles that do end up on Facebook or other forums, they've always got a gotcha, you know, such as a, a lack of parentheses, et cetera, that uh, send some people into a fit. Uh, they just, you know, they just don't remember how the order of operations works after many years. Uh, but, you know, it's not in people's nature to admit they don't remember, you know, what they were actually taught. So, you know, I really challenge anybody. I have had a challenge out for probably at least two years to challenge anybody to show me a textbook from the last 100 years that does not teach order of operations. Uh, nobody's ever been able to produce one. Um, you know, there have been books that had, have had some typos or ambiguities, but uh, none have ever taught uh, anything other than order of operations. So uh, that just doesn't doesn't fly. Uh, anybody that understands mathematics understands that. Uh, so you know, before before if, if you're tending to want to make that excuse, think about it twice. All right, one. One of the common arguments that I'll also see <clears throat> with order of operations is that uh, some people will say, well, it just seems natural to solve it left to right. You know, uh, the argument is not really well thought out. People say, well, you know, I read a sentence left to right. Why don't I do math left to right? Or why don't they just put all the multiplication in the beginning? Um, it goes against our understanding of how multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction are supposed to work. You know, if I look at this example here, 4 times 3 plus 5 times 2 plus 9 times 6 equals, uh, using their poor judgment, uh, and you go through all these steps, you're going to do, well, 4 times 3 is 12, then they're going to add the 5, uh, which they shouldn't be doing, but they're going to do that, they're going to get 17, then they're going to take 17 times 2, they're going to get 34, and then they're going to take the 34 and add it to the 9 all the way over there, uh, and then... Um, uh, you're going to get 43, and they're going to take 43 times 6 and get 258. Um, as soon as you change the problem and discuss it using money, sometimes that triggers a remembrance of order of operations. It starts to make sense. Sometimes people have to see a real a real world example. Um, so you know, here I bought four diet cokes for three bucks a piece, uh, five vice teas for two dollars a piece, and nine cheeseburgers for six dollars a piece. How much money did I spend? So you're going to take 4 times 3 plus 5 times 12 plus 9 times 6. That's going to be, you know, you do the multiplication first and then add. So 12 plus 10 plus 54 would be uh, 76. So you spent $76. Um, but the poor souls who don't remember the order of operations, uh, they're going to be happy paying a bill of $258 uh, when they leave the restaurant. So, uh, you know, yeah. You have to consider that, how, how, how that actually works. Um, there's another good way to think about <clears throat> the order of operations. And when you understand that multiplication is nothing more um, than repeated addition, you know, it's trivial to replace all the multiplication and division with addition. So if you write, you know, 5 times 5 is 25, or you write it out the long way, uh, you can write it out a long way as 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 equals 25. Um, both of those are the same. Um, multiplication is just shorthand for addition. Now if you look, use that idea on the problem we just looked at, you could take 4 times 3 and make it like that. You take your 5 times 2, so you add up 5 sets of 2 uh, and add up 9 sets of 6. And if you do all that and you add up all those numbers, you get 76. Uh, now, if you're believing that you just solve blindly left to right no matter what, you're ignoring that shorthand status of multiplication. 
Uh, so hopefully that makes some sense. And and the next time you're in a forum, uh, feel free to post a link uh, to this video and explanation. Uh, the other other thing you can do is um, you can rearrange the order of the multiplication steps in the problem we just looked at, and you're going to get the same answer. So you look at the problem. You know, it doesn't matter if we're talking about the Cokes, uh, the iced teas, and the burgers. It doesn't matter in which order they get rung up at the register, right? You're going to get you're going to be paying the same amount of money. So when you look at this here, if I rearrange it as five times two plus four times three plus nine times six, and you go through and solve it, you get 76. I could rearrange it again uh, as nine times six plus four times three plus five times two. So you can think of it as, you know, go to the grocery store. It doesn't matter. You're tossing your things up on the moving belt. It doesn't matter in which order the cashier or and today's today you're probably scanning it yourself. Um, you're still going to get $76 at the end. The price doesn't change. But I'm telling you, if you just do this blind left to right business, you're going to get a different answer each time. So it really blows a big hole in the water. And, and think about it. What confident math teacher would have ever taught you to get a different answer, depending on the order that you scan your grocery items? You know, it really makes no sense when you really think about it. So, um, yeah. Um, that fallacy of that left-right method, what I just said here, it's exposed when you try to legitimately rearrange the multiplication of the problem you've been looking at. So here, if you take the 4 times 3 plus 5 times 2 plus 9 times 6, uh, we already said before that if we solve blindly left to right, you get 258. Well, what happens if you change it and say do 5 times 2 plus 4 times 3 plus 9 times 6? you're going to end up with, uh, you work this thing all the way through, you can kind of see my steps here, you're going to end up with like 306. So already you've got a different number. And like I said before, if you scramble your stuff on the, the moving belt at the checkout line, it doesn't matter which order they're scanned, you're going to be paying the same amount. But when you do this math, you get different answers. So how could solving blindly left to right be what you learned in the old days? It didn't happen. It's 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 a false memory. Let's just say it, okay? Um, you know, you can't even, you can't even get the same answer when you blindly solve left to right. So when you uh, you know when you rearrange the multiplication just as I did. So ask yourself, what competent mathematics teacher would have ever taught you that nonsense? The truth is that nobody ever did. Um, it's perfectly valid to move the multiplication as I did to get the answer of 76 over and over and over. You know, going back to that example of food, doesn't matter what order I buy the Cokes, iced teas, and cheeseburgers, you're going to spend the same amount of money provided you buy them at the same quantities and the prices don't change. But, you know, there's people out there trying to convince you that back in the 1950s, 60s, or 70s, they had teachers that made you think you spend more money if you bought the burgers on Monday and the Cokes on Tuesday and the iced teas on Wednesday, if instead if you bought it, the iced teas on Monday and the Cokes and burgers on Tuesday. Um, and unfortunately, they don't even see the fallacy of their own argument. And so they're, what they're doing is they're throwing their teachers under the bus because they don't remember or didn't learn it the first time. Um, and they're making their teachers look incompetent. And I don't think they even realize they're doing that. So, you know, these different back and forth arguments that are being made online, and uh, they're, they're being made by mostly people who don't have the fundamental understanding uh, of multiplication, division, addition, or subtraction. You know, they believe a lot of the myths in place of the facts. You know, many of them might recall a small piece of the order of operations, and some have forgotten it completely. So you got to remember that that's not new math, and it's much more than some rigid and arbitrary convention. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that I helped understand, help you understand why it's important and you know why it's got to be followed. Uh, mathematics is not subjective, and there can't be multiple correct answers to the same problem. That just would never work. Um, it's not creative writing. It's not art appreciation. It's mathematics. So um, order of operations has beginnings that go back to into the 16th century in some of the earliest books on algebra. Now, just because that information appeared in algebra books 
does not limit its use to algebra. I, I hear that argument all the time that, well, this isn't algebra, it doesn't apply. <laughs> that's, that's not true. <clears throat> so please, please review some other legitimate sources on, on the order. Uh, on the order of operations, and uh, <clears throat> just don't rely on bloggers or Quora posts from random strangers or, or some wiki. Uh, <clears throat> sorry about that. Um, don't just take my word for it either. Um, I've had some people send me screenshots from a Quora post uh, claiming that order of operations wasn't introduced into the curriculum, uh, and they might be talking about the UK. I'm not sure where they're talking about it, but we're saying it wasn't introduced into the curriculum until 1988, and since they went to school before 1988, they tried to convince me that it proved that, you know, they learned it differently before then, and that's completely false. There, there's no, I don't know what they're talking about, and that post was made by some random person, <clears throat> and, you know, they're, some people are taking screenshots of that stuff and putting it forth as a, as, as a reference. Uh, I do have an entire video that goes into good and bad sources of information, uh, as well as some of the other things related to order of operations um, and other specific puzzles uh, that are all over the Internet. Um, I'll add some links in the description at some point on this video. Um, you can take a look at the channel, but I'm just trying to bring some common sense uh, to this discussion and, and arm people with some facts. And uh, they really need those to successfully argue uh, why the why the order of operation works. You know, so don't just say, "Well, that's how it always has been." You know, go through, break it down like I just did, and and it really should make more sense, and it won't seem so arbitrary. Um, and I'd appreciate it too if you would share and like these uh, also, and consider subscribing if you found the information helpful. Um, it is here as a reference. And your support helps me to continue to place the effort into these videos and hopefully make them even better in the future. Um, currently, I'm just using my laptop, uh, Microsoft PowerPoint, Bandicam to do recordings and uh, DaVinci Resolve to edit. Um, I'm no expert on any of them, but um, you know I am trying. I am working on it. Um, as of June of 2023, I don't make any money from this and. Uh, really don't know that I ever will. That's not really the reason I started it, but um, I'm concerned about the large-scale misinformation out there on how to solve similar problems, and uh, you know, my goal really is to, not to humiliate, but to educate. I hope you found this helpful.